Hello, my lovelies. It's Casey. Welcome back. We're doing another journal spread today in the Pocky Art Journal. I've already got my pages gessoed, and this is my color palette for today. Very spring and Easter-like. Um, on the back of the color palette, you can see there are different shades of the colors, which I want to use because the colors I have in the front are all kind of mid-tones, and I want to have some darks in there because darks really make a complete picture. So I'm going to be using my gelatos, which are by Faber-Castell. And I like them a lot, they're water soluble. I'm trying to find a good yellow that's going to match the yellow on the card as much as possible. And this is fun, it's coloring just like in kindergarten, you just throw the color on the page, it's fantastic. It's a good way to get rid of that blank white page that you don't know what to do with. Now it does come with a blending sponge, but I like to use my fingers because I don't know, I just like getting messy. And now I'm gonna get some water and use my brush and um, kind of just smear the color in. With the gelatos, if you keep the gelatos on the page, on the gessoed page, um, they can kind of rub off. So I like to use the water to get them to be more permanent on the page. Now I'm going to take another color and add that in because I don't like to have just one color in the background all the time. It can look a little flat. So I'm adding some orange around the edges. It's not really a huge difference. It's pretty subtle. It ends up not mattering because I put so much stuff over the top anyway but I know it's there, and if you really look, you can see the color gradation, so it, that makes me happy. Now, the reason that I rub this in instead of just going straight to the water is because it kind of leaves a mark like a crayon. And if you go over that mark with the water, it doesn't completely blend in so you can still see the marks underneath. Which is fine if that's what you're going for, but that's not what I wanted in this. I wanted everything nice and smooth and even. pages that I'm using for this spread are nothing special. Um, the blank one is the back side of a piece of scrapbooking paper, and the one on the left hand side is just a piece of a, uh, I think it was an art club calendar. It was either a calendar or it could have been minutes from the last meeting, I don't remember. but it was just a junk piece of paper. And I thought it made a kind of cool background. This is Music Note um, tissue paper. And I had special ordered this, I think from either Etsy or Amazon. Um, I was giving a gift to someone and I wanted Music Note paper. This is regular tissue paper that I painted on one side. I think it was with bubble wrap that I pressed it on there. It might have been my jelly plate and I used bubble wrap on the jelly plate and then put the tissue paper on the top. I think that's what it was. But I did turn the tissue paper over because I actually like the side better that isn't painted on. You can still see the pattern underneath but it's not so in your face. Since this is part of the background, I kind of wanted it to be in the background and not, oh, hey, look at me, it's bubble wrap. I'm 
I'm using Mod Podge to glue it down because it is tissue paper and I wanted to make sure the glue got spread evenly. Usually I use Elmer's glue to glue things, but with delicate stuff, I do use Mod Podge. I have a matte Mod Podge. Um, I know some people don't use Mod Podge because it's glossy, but you can buy it in matte. And I prefer to use this over gel medium because it's cheaper. And I like the finish over the top. I always do put Mod Podge over the top just to make sure that if I'm putting marker or anything over the tissue paper, it's not going to bleed. I really liked the effect of this. You can kind of see the bubble wrap paint pattern on the top part of that strip, but really where it goes over the music note tissue paper, you can really see it. It creates a really interesting visual texture. My handy dandy hair dryer. A lot of people use a heat gun. I just use a hair dryer. It's cheap and I know I'm not going to burn the paper. I'm getting out my Posca pens. I know Posca is a big brand for acrylic paint markers. They're okay. They're fine. They have good coverage, but sometimes the nibs really kind of wear down and you end up with pieces of nib all over what you're coloring, and I don't really care for that. But they do have a good range of colors, and the paint is good, and it flows nicely. So, pros and cons. Now here I'm just making shapes. I want a kind of a plant shape-ish, um, maybe like a seaweed type of thing. You really don't have to be able to draw anything in particular to have a good piece of art. It's neat when you can just make marks and it all just comes together. All you have to do is keep repeating your marks. I was reading a forum online um, with beginning artists in it, and one of the artists said that she doesn't feel like a real artist because she doesn't know how to draw realistically. She tends to do abstracts. And I know how to draw realistically, but I don't like to draw realistically. And honestly, I mean, I can appreciate the work that goes into realism. I, I really appreciate the skill that it takes and the time that it takes. But I actually like looking at things that I can't see in real life. I like to see into someone's imagination and see the world through their eyes rather than through my own. And so I think not being able to draw really isn't a hamper to creating art. I think it almost makes it more interesting. So you can see my little plant here. It's not realistic at all. It's very flat and it's just basically a bunch of globular shapes and, and a stem. But I'm going to not stop with one, I'm going to do several and the effect is really cool. Art can be anything. It doesn't have to be realistic at all. And some people say, oh, anyone can do that. Well, yeah, anyone can do it. That's, that's the point of making art. Anyone can make art. But no two people are going to make art the same way. That's the beauty of it. Art is a personal expression, and no one's going to make art the way you make art. Even if you copy someone else's art, it's still going to be uniquely yours because you can't help it. You can't exactly copy someone else. We're not photocopy machines. 
It might be real subtle differences, but there will be differences. Although I think it's a lot more fun to put all kinds of differences in and really make it your own. I got the idea for this pattern that I'm drawing from another artist, actually. And she makes hers a lot different than I make mine, even though it's a very simple shape. Art is one of those things where it's not objectively good or objectively bad. There's a lot of freedom in that. Poscas do cover pretty well, but even so, going over other colors, you kind of have to make sure you get it all filled in. Now, I didn't have a marker in the color blue that I wanted. I want the dark blue there. So I'm going to mix some paint. These are Liquitex Basics. They just happen to be the colors that I needed to mix the color I wanted. I normally use my fluid acrylics, but these are all right too. I'm taking a turquoise blue and adding a little Payne's Gray to darken it down. And it's always best to start with a little bit of the dark and add it because it's easy to make it darker by adding more paint. It's really hard to make it lighter again once it's too dark. Now the color on the card is duller than the color I have in the paint. And I could have dulled it down by adding a little bit of orange. If you want to make a color dull, you add its complementary color. But because the spread has such um, bright and springtime colors on it, I didn't want to dull the blue. I wanted to keep it bright. So I'm using my brush, and it would have been a lot smoother with fluid acrylics than it is with the Liquitex Basics, but it's still a soft enough body paint that I can get the effect that I want without too much trouble. Different kinds of paint also have different levels of opacity. Um, some are more transparent and some are more opaque, so you want to keep that in mind when choosing your paint. I wanted something very opaque to go over the other colors I already have on the page. I find that Liquitex Basics are pretty opaque. I do have some fluid acrylics that are not by golden. The golden ones tend to be more opaque than the other brand I have, and I don't remember what the other brand is offhand. Um, but it's neat to be able to use both of those depending on what I want to do with the paint. So all I've done is make my little plant shapes in three different colors and I think the effect is really cool. It went from just being a shape to being a picture. Now I'm going to take a little piece of scrapbook paper that's basically got the colors that I want on it. I really like the metallic gold stripe in there. And I want to add something in that blank spot on the right side. I'm not really thinking too much about what I want to do here. I just want something there. And so I'm going to tear some shapes. I do want to be able to see that green tissue paper. I 
I like to position things around differently to see where it gives weight to the page. It's important to have balance. I also think it's important to have space for the eye to rest. So I don't like to fill every corner of my page. If you're into a more maximalist look, then fill every blank space and go for it. Now all that's left is to add my sentiment in the blank space. It took me a minute to figure out what I wanted to write there. I thought about trying it first with pencil and then I thought, no, nah, I'm just gonna go for it. And then I made the first couple of letters and thought, Ooh, that's way too big. And so I had to kind of improvise where I put all my other letters. And honestly, at this point, I thought, oh, I just ruined the whole thing. But then I added some fun little embellishments to the letters. And honestly, this is one of Bob Ross's happy accidents because I love the way this turned out. It's so playful and fun and it really looks like it's springing up off the bottom of the page. I think that's a common thing with art. At some point you think, oh, I just ruined this, or oh, I hate this. I'm never gonna turn out anything good with that page, but you keep working at it and it gets there. cute. And there it is, the finished piece. Doesn't have to be complicated. Just some paper and some simple shapes. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you next time.